Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to cover a vulnerability within KeePass that was released back in May. I still had this version available on my local machine, so I wanted to play with the exploit that was available to us. And that is what we are going to cover today. We are going to dump a, an example database within KeePass to get that master password. So in theory, if you were to get this dump file from a machine that you were looking to exploit, you could go ahead and get that master password to grant you access to that database file. In addition to covering the exploits, we are also going to cover a Python script that I had developed for this example. The exploits that we are given provides various passwords that may be the correct password. And in there, the first character in there is not given to us. And in some cases, there are multiple characters that are not able to be determined. So the Python script that I had developed takes that first character and rotates it or iterates through a list of characters that I had defined in the Python script. And it will attempt each iteration with a login. If a login is successful, it will let us know. And then therefore we have brute forced that password and we now have access granted to that database. So I, I will better explain that once we get to that point. So let's go ahead and just look over the national vulnerability database. Here's the CVE. It was released back in May. As you can see here, here's the description. This is for KeePass version 2.x for the main version. And then it, uh, it has to be before 2.54. As you can see here, it says it is possible to recover the clear text master password from the memory dump. So knowing that we must get a memory dump, otherwise this is not available to us. And this applies even when the workspace is locked or no longer running. The memory dump can be a key pass process dump, swap file, hibernation file, or even a RAM dump of the entire system. And as you can see here, as I briefly mentioned earlier, the first character cannot be recovered. And sometimes there's multiple characters that cannot be recovered. But in today's example, it is only the first character that cannot be recovered. So the Python script that I had developed will attempt a login with each iteration of a character that we have defined in the script and it will try to get a success. Uh, so you can read more about this here. They also provide the GitHub repository as you can see right here, which is what we are going to take a look at now. Here's the GitHub repository with a POC or with an example of this exploit. It does go into good detail about this exploit. It also discusses how, or it discusses the importance of this exploit. And as you can see, it obviously depends on your threat model. If no one has any access to your machine or to this database, then this exploit is not really anything to worry about. But if for whatever reason, someone is able to get on your machine and as you can see here, conduct a forensic analysis, or in this case, dump the or get the dump file for the key pass and even get the database to use then this is something that you should be concerned about key pass did release the newest version as you can see here on their home page or on their downloads page the 2.54 which is the fixed version has been released so this exploit is no longer available but as we all know not everyone updates their machines right away even me i didn't even update it i kept clicking out of it until I realized what it was. And now for fun, I'm going to use this exploit and then patch it after and release this video. So here's kind of what it looks like or what we will kind of get and it kind of explains how it works. So the flaw exploited here is that for every character that is typed, a leftover string is created in memory, which will be stored in the dump file. As it says here, it is nearly impossible to get rid of it once it is created. And for example, once password is typed, this is kind of what it will leave behind. And as you can see, the first character P is not able to be recovered. And you will see that in the script example that I provide in a minute. So that kind of talks about that. It also provides a video exactly of what you will see and how to go about it. Also, if you scroll, scroll down, you'll see another POC, which is the Python implementation. He said he has not checked out any of these yet. But I went ahead and tried out both versions. Python is obviously super fun or super easy to use. Instead of installing the 
.NET, which is required to run this exploit or this version of the exploit, we could go ahead and use Python. And all you have to do here, those that are not familiar with GitHub, um, you're going to go ahead and have to download this. So if you go up here, it gives you the um, command. So if you did git clone and then copied this, you'd be able to dump or clone this repository onto your local machine. And that will give you access to the poc.py. And here's how you execute it. Python 3 poc.py, D for, I think it was the debug option, and then the dump file. And in there, you will get the possible passwords, as you can see here as an example. So to do this on our machine, the first thing that you are going to obviously need is you are going to need the dump file. And to do that, you will have to have this open. You will have to type it out. If you do not type it out and you copy and paste the password into the master password for the login, you will then not get the correct results as it is not put into memory, as I found out. So now open up task manager once you have keypass and you are logged into the database and you're going to right click it and you're going to create dump file and then you are going to want to get that dump file onto your Linux machine or whatever machine you are executing this Python script on. In my case, I am using a virtual machine and here is the dump file and here's the poc-revise.py. This is just uh, an iteration or a change that I had made to the script as I will show you now. This is the script, nothing has changed. The only thing that I had modified was here at the bottom. Instead of printing it to the screen, I wanted to print the results to a file. And I wanted to separate each of the passwords with a comma. This way we could easily put that into a Python list, which I will cover in a few minutes. So with open, here's a directory that we want to copy this to, which is the directory we are executing the script in. We want to use the dash or the, uh, we want to use the A option, which will append each of the results to this text file, which in this case will be each of the possible passwords that this script finds. And here it will write the password and it will add a comma at the end of each password. And then at the very end of the script, once all the loop is complete, it will print Content has been written to the file, which is by default, and I did not add that. So let's go ahead and execute that script. To do so, you will use Python 3, poc-revise.py, or if you don't have this, just do the poc.py, whatever you decide to do in your example. Dash B, and then specify the dump file and let it execute. Sorry, that should be dash D for debug. And go ahead and let that execute. All right, so once that script has finished executing, we will go ahead and read the test.txt file. In there, you will see that we have each of the passwords that are options found within this script. And as you can see, the first character is unknown, and each of them are separated by commas. And here's the script that I had developed in order to brute force this login using the passwords that was provided to us in the last script. So we will kind of go from the top down, just a simple script, nothing too crazy. So as you can see here, we have a variable and in there we have assigned every single character and digit and punctuation that is available to us within Python into this variable. From there, we create an empty list called passwords found. Then we will open up that test.txt file, which we had just created a minute ago. We will read that out into the content variable. We'll create another variable called password found and assign that to the value of false. We will then do passwords or create a variable passwords underscore found, which will split up the content into a list separ separated by the delimiter as a comma. So everything after the comma will be a new list value within passwords found. We will then loop through the passwords found from the dump file. So for P and passwords found, which is this list right here, we will then assign a new variable login underscore password, which will pretty much break up the value that is being looped through or iterated through as a list, and it will assign it to this variable. From there, we are going to say for every character in all possible characters, 
we're going to change out the first position in login password to this character that it is looping through at that time. And then we're going to assign brute pass variable to join that list that we had just created up here. So now it's no longer a list, it is now a string value that we could pass through. And down here we will use um, pi key pass and we'll pass through the database and the password which will be brute pass. And here if it is found, it will print the brute pass and the password found equals true. If there's an error, we will just continue, otherwise it will break down every time or it will present that error every time. And if password is found, we want to exit. If it goes through every iteration and it cannot find a password, we will say password not found. So let's go ahead and execute that script. So we'll specify Python and then the Python file. And there you go. So as you can see here, it has printed to the screen the password that was able to log in. Now, for example, let's say we modified that test.txt file. And we just make it so this password is not able to log in. Just to highlight that it was not able to find a password, we will show that here. And as you can see here, it says password not found. That is because we modified the test.txt file. So the passwords that were provided and iterated through was not a valid attempt at logging into the database. And that is why we got that message here. The current script is not the fastest. So for instance, this with the multiple passwords that were available or found took about three to five minutes. There are ways to speed the script up. This was just a simple script that I had set up to provide an example to you guys. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you were able to take something away and you like this content, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more. And as always, Never stop learning.